Glory be to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to learn at your feet. Lord, as we go into your words, speak to our hearts. Bless us through your words. And at the end of our race, please help us to reign with you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Welcome to another episode of Bible Lessons. Please get set as we uh, dig deep into what the Lord has in mind for us this time. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. We are looking at avoiding artful labels, mindful communication in parenting. How can we avoid artful labels? You see, as parents, we must manage our choice of words, especially when we are communicating with our children. There are times we unintentionally use artful labels against our children. We address our children in a way that is leaving them to think for years over that particular name that we are giving to them. And sometimes it's not coming out of hatred or maybe wickedness. Sometimes we pray for them, we take their pictures to the programs, we do a manner of things for them. We will lay hands on them to pray for them. We take them to the place where they will pray for them. But sometimes when it comes to we now communicating with them, we use some artful labels. We are not mindful in our communication. So as we study in this episode, um, God will be opening our eyes to see areas where we need to make adjustments. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, the Bible says, The tongue has the power of life and death. So you can create life into your, the lives of your children. You can also create the other side of it. So you need to be intentional. Yeah, don't forget, looking at uh, it's still under the series Intentional Parenting in this present uh, world or Peaceful Parenting in this present world. What are some of those so artful labels? Let's give an example. You know, or before we give example, we need to know the impact of this artful label. Then we now give example. You see, it can bring limiting beliefs into your children. It can lower their self-esteem and they will move on with it. There are some that they will come to a realization, maybe when they are a teenage age or youthful age, but it might be a struggle if at all they are able to, they will be able to overcome it. Because some may not even know the kind of help, the kind of person they are supposed to talk to. So don't create negative self-image by the use of artful label. It can also create, um, I mean, encourage limiting beliefs. It can lead to withdrawal. It can affect your relationship with your children. They can withdraw. Whenever you are around or they are around you, they will give you what you want. But when you are not there, they will now begin to live their life. There are a lot of children that when they are around their parents, they are not living their real life because they know that whatever it is they do, you have names, different names you give to them. So what are some of the examples of artful labels? For example, you say you are so rough. Maybe the child is, um, cloth is dirty for that period. And you say you are so rough. You are, that's, that's, not, that's not the life of that child. What you have seen is that the cloth is dirty. So that is what you are supposed to express. Sometimes you say you are lazy. The child is not waking up at times. You are the one waking this child up. You say you are lazy. That statement, that label, we go a long way. We'll be ringing. There will be a place where this child will find himself or herself, where people will be struggling. And what will come to mind is, my mommy, my daddy said, I am lazy. So let me just maintain. That's how dangerous, artful label could be. Sometimes you say you are shy. You know, it's just making the first presentation and that's the first time. And you just give that label. Go, you are shy. Remember, label is so powerful. 
One of the first assignments God gave to Abraham, I mean Adam, was this label, labeling of animals. Give them names. Whatever you call them, that's all. And the names remain till today. So you never can tell. Whatever you are giving, the names you are giving to your children might remain for life. That's why we read Isaiah 8, 18. He said, ah, my children that God has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders. What are you saying concerning them? Especially when you are not praying. Especially when you are not in the church. Especially when you are not in the family devotion. What are you saying about them? Sometimes you call them, you say you are wicked. Probably this person, the, the, the brother is passing and is putting his leg uh, and the brother now fall. Maybe got injured. And you look at him and say, you are wicked. That's labor. You have not addressed what this person has done. You have only given a name to it. You always get me angry. That's another one. You always get me angry. But that's not true. How can your child be, be getting you angry all the time? It's not true. What about when the child is in the school and you are in your place of work and you are angry, angry with your boss, angry with your employer or employee? Uh, is it the child that is getting you angry? So when you say, you are always getting me angry, you are not saying the truth. You are only giving the lib a label to that child. Or you say, uh -huh, I, you are too know. I know you are too know. This guy is just being inquisitive, wants to know. He has not had the word I too know before. You are the one that knows and is giving it that name. So he's going to accept it like all those animals, all those things accepted the name Adam gave to them. Artful labor. So how can we practice mindful communication with our children? Number one, you need to focus on their behavior, not on their character. For example, instead of you saying you are careless, you can say, I notice you left your plate unwashed. I noticed you, you didn't pack your book last night. So instead of saying you are careless, he said, I noticed this. So instead of saying, oh, you have, to, you have to be specific. That's another thing. You have to be specific and be objective. Yes. So instead of saying you are bad in your academics, academics, I say, oh. You can as well say, oh, I notice you are struggling with reading at home. Yeah. This, you don't know what this guy is doing in the school. But when he's getting to the house, you've never seen this child saying, I want to read. So the label you are giving this child is, you are bad in academics. You don't like, you don't study. You No, I noticed you've not been reading at home since you resumed. Is there anything around it? You will hear more and you will be able to help. Because it is the information they provide for you that will determine the effectiveness of your help that you think you are rendering for them. So you need to offer constructive feedback. Like, let's find a way to improve rather than you saying you are not trying. You are seeing the performance. You say, okay, let's find a way to improve. This person is washing the dishes and everything is not, you know, just tidy and somehow. You can say, okay, come, look at all these things. Do you like them the way they are? Of course, the child will say no. I say, okay, how can we improve so that when next you wash this, it will be better than this? Uh, okay, um, I will put more soap or I will rinse it very well. That one will sink and we, you know, it's like a joint work. When we want to help our children, don't think you can do it alone. You also need them. And how can you get them? You have to make sure you practice mindful communication. So practice empathy. That's another way to practice uh, mindful communication. Number five, practice empathy. Instead of saying, I know you have, I mean, instead of saying you are stubborn, you can say, I know you are frustrated. And say, um, then it's because of this person, it's because of this, it's because of this. And at the end of the day, he's going to see that which you want him or her to see. But sometimes in this part of the world, some of all these things I'm saying is like, ah, is it not my child? I'm the father, I'm the mother. What kind of, uh, you know, um, slow act is action? 
let's let's give it to him. Wow, you have done this wrong. Get it. Bah, get get the beating. Get it immediately. Sometimes we are even proud of it. Me, I don't take nonsense. I give it to you immediately. Hot. You take it hot. And you are you are just satisfying yourself. But do you know what? You are creating a problem for them. That will remain with them till tomorrow. Another thing to do is promote self-awareness. Yeah. You can ask questions like, how do you think you can improve on this? Let that child give you suggestion. I was talking with a teenager and I said, okay, how do you think you can improve in your studies, in reading? I said, okay, I should be reading so so number of times per day. Um, I should, I said a lot of things, I'm on here, so I can't uh, go to details. And I said, okay, when do you want to start? He said, okay, by next month. Okay, what kind of help do you need? And he said this. So you, you need to create that self-awareness in them. How do you think you can improve on this? I've noticed that you've not been writing very well. How do you think you can improve on this? And say, okay, I will try. I will do this. When they are giving promise, you are making them to take responsibility of whatever it is they want to do. You can also foster resilience. Tell them you can learn from your mistake. Let them feel safe making mistakes around you. Don't create a kind of environment that will look like you, you must not miss, you dare not make mistake. Sometimes we won't tell them, the day you do this kind of things, I will, I will almost kill you that day. So the, the fear is already in them and there are things they will never try because they don't want to die, they don't want you to kill them. And you may not really mean it. There is no normal parent that will want to kill you, so I tried. So we need to practice mindful communication. Cultivate gratitude. When they have done something right for you, be grateful. And don't say it inside. They need that gratitude. Tell them, I'm grateful. Ah, so before even you are looking for something like, where's my shoe? I say, ah, I'm sorry, I helped you to wash the shoe and um, clean the shoe and I pack it here. Say, wow, thank you. But don't say, okay, by the time you've finished cleaning it, why don't you return it to the right place where you pick it from? That that time I not try that again. Might not try it again. At times, in the process of helping you, they will spoil, they will damage things. Separate it. Pick what they are trying to do. Don't just, because of the, the pain, the, the destruction or whatever they have caused, let them feel safe, making mistakes. It's not as if you are telling them to make a mistake, but there is no way they will learn from their mistake. Also, you yourself now, what you are supposed to do, I will give you three things you are supposed to do. This is for yourself that will help you to help your children. Practice what I call self-reflection. What do I mean by self-reflection? Recognize your labeling pattern. At what point do you label your children? Sometimes you are in the church, you are praying for them. But in the car is fight till you get to the house. They can't even gist with you. The moment they say, hey, daddy, you, you will shut them up. Practice self-reflection. At what point do I label my children? Is it when they are reading? Is it when they are watching TV? Is it when they are, we are together in the, in the car? Sometimes you want to speak, you are speaking with them on phone, you don't label them, you talk to them very well. You are in the public, you address them very well, you are proud of them. But when you are together at home, it's war. Practice self-reflection. Study your patterns. Another thing is active listening. Listen to, their to your child's perspective. Listen to the, what they have to say. Let them learn, let them say it. Let them say it, even if they won't say it right. And when they say it, pick what you can pick and help them. If you listen to the way that the GO used to do analysis of uh, uh, young people preaching, there are times he will give some points. You will know that he has packaged, he has repackaged the point for them. He had an understanding of what, what they are trying to say. He will say it that way. Then lastly, you need to um, pause before you talk. So you need to practice a few minutes pause before you talk. Yes, 
consider the impact of what you are about to say. It might not be for now. It might be in them for life. Some parents, they've called their children failure. You are a failure with all the money I've spent on you. And you may not say it the way I'm saying it now. But the summary of what you are saying is, this child is a failure. I, I paid your school fees, I clothed you, I fed you, I manner of things, and this is the result you are bringing? I'm tired of you. In fact, I'm fed up. In fact, maybe you will even stop going to the school and go and learn another thing. A child is using the newspaper in your house to make something, and you're like, is this your book? Is this what you are supposed to be doing now? You are supposed to be reading. You are making nonsense, and you squeeze everything and destroy it. You don't know the child is only telling you, I am creative. Create more room for me to become more creative. Practice active listening. Then pause before you, you talk. There are more. Please stay tuned. Visit this um, YouTube channel or Facebook page to get um, more about parenting and some other aspects of our lives. Pray the Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus, for those crying presently over their children, the Almighty God will intervene. In our church, this is a month of divine intervention. God will intervene on your behalf over your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you for listening. God bless you. See you next week by God's grace.